428 is what this car is. Now to explain that, we have to go back in history just a little bit. In 1955, 56, and 57, Ford produced a thing called the Thunderbird. It was a two-seater sports car style car. It competed against uh, Chevrolet's Corvette, okay, and it beat the hell out of Corvette, five to one, okay? But in 1958, Ford, in all its great wonders, they decided to cut out the two-seater and they changed the Thunderbird to a four-seater. So maybe that was good, maybe that was bad. We don't know. Meanwhile, the Corvette takes off. And a lot of people are buying Corvettes. There's a bunch of people out there, they like muscle cars, and they, they're just loving that Corvette. As they do right up to this very day. Corvette has that connotation of, hey, look at me. <laughs> I got a Corvette. All right? I have a Corvette at home. I've got a 1958 Corvette girl at my 51 Chevy. Anyway, <laughs> besides the point. So they produced in 1965, they come up with a thing called a Mustang. And there's going to be somebody out there that says, no, they, no, you lie. It was a 1964 and a half. It was not. It was a 65. In these days, they used to produce the new models on Labor Day weekend. There was a World's Fair in New York in 1964. So, what better place to unveil a new car than you want to be successful right off the bat? World's Fair! So that's why it was produced early and it was a 65. Now, that sort of does the two-car, the two-seater thing. It was really a four-seater, but it was very small. Nobody could sit in the back seat of a Mustang and it could, you know, it could drive. There's no way. So it was really a two-seater. But now you had to answer the muscle question. So in 1965, Ford approached Carroll Shelby. And they said, look, we've got to do something to compete, to compete against that Corvette. So what we'll do is we'll make the base Mustang, we'll send it to you, you hop it up, you, ch you change the design of a bit, and then we'll sell it with your name on it. We'll call it Shelby. Okay? Fine. You got yourself a deal. So that's what they did up to 1969. And in 1969, in fact, it was the summer of 69, as Brian Adams said, okay? Then Carol Shelby left for it. Okay? Matter of fact, there was probably enough controversy at the beginning of 1969 when they were doing the 1969 models. They were no longer built at Shelby America. They were built actually by Ford. Okay? Now, there is no such thing as a 1970 Shelby GT because they were really 1969s, leftover 1969s, with the VIN number changed to read 1970. What happened to Carroll Shelby? Well, he did a lot of things. The AC Cobra, etc., etc. But he did one more thing with the Mustang. He did another Mustang variant in Europe. It was called the Shelby Europa. And he did that in 1971 and 1972. So there's just a little bit of information for you. A little bit more about this car. This car, its stance and everything is as it was in 1969. Two changes to this car. This car is two inches lower than what it would have been because it's been dropped. The suspension has been dropped. And it has LED tail. A lot of guys replace the B57s with LEDs so that you get a brighter tail. That's important on our highways. The other really interesting thing about this is this is a barn find. Does everybody know what a barn find is? If you don't know, please raise your hand. So I need to explain it. Okay, a barn find. I'll give you a scenario of a barn sign, okay? Hopefully you'll enjoy this. I'm a city slicker, and I want to move to the country. And I don't like living in subdivisions, so I'm going to buy myself a farm house. So I go up to, uh, I don't know, Essa Township, and I buy myself a little old farmhouse, five acres, and it's got the barn on it, and the house. So I go through the house, and I get yeah, 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 that's what I want. I don't really need a barn, because I'm from the city, so I don't worry too much about the barn. Well, after I've moved in, I go up and I take a look at what's in the barn. I open up the barn doors and I take a look inside. That's what I expected. A bunch of old, you know, farm implements. I don't even know what the hell they are. Okay? And there's a bunch of old cedar rail fencing up there and a pile of old hay bales and just junk all over. 
So I'm sort of cruising around and I look over and I Holy smoke, that looks like wheels over there. Yeah, what, 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 so I go a little closer. Yeah, that's nope. wheels. There's tire under there. So I knock all that seat of wheeling down. I get rid of all those yeah. dark heat bills. And I look underneath there, and it's dirty as hell. You know, just junk all over the place. Well, what have I got here? So I, geez, it looks like a Mustang. So I take my little cloth, and I wipe off, and I see a cobra. I'm starting to get excited. Okay. Now I go down a little further and I wipe off this 428. Wow. I'm no longer excited. You know, I'm out of this world. Okay, it's the Klondike Gold Rush all over again. I found myself the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And it's in my bar.